Welcome, wrestling fans. Welcome to Curtain Jerk. And as always, I'm your host, Jacob Grundy, reporting for the Main Event Marks YouTube channel. You can also check me out on Spotify. However, you're listening to my voice, I appreciate it. And I'm talking quick. I'm going in through my intro a little quicker than usual, a little more excited than usual because it is WrestleMania week. We have a lot to break down in the world of WWE, and then we're going to go into AEW as well. I haven't even talked about Raw from last week. I'm going to get into that right now before I get into SmackDown, NXT, and the week that was in AEW. CM Punk out there in Chicago. Will he be a Mania? Yes, he will. Teases that he could be the ref for Rollins and... uh, um, McIntyre. Um, I don't know why he said that. He also said that he listens to Jim Cornette. He was just out there uh, saying things that I mean, I wouldn't say if I was trying to get in the good graces of everyone backstage. Um, but he, of course, he doesn't give a shit, which makes sense, uh, you know, that he listens to uh, Cornette because he's an angry wrestling fan. So that's what they all listen to. Drew, his music hits uh, fresh from his trip to Mindy's uh, Bakery that day, eating some muffins, closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, famously enough, as we know. I've actually been to Mindy's Bakery, and I can vouch CM Punk knows his baked goods. That place is delicious. Showing off his new shirt, bragging about uh, hurting Punk. Uh, Drew is, uh, I never had uh, to put another man's name on a shirt to sell it, is what Punk says. So he's constantly going off the cuff and kind of saying a lot of things that I don't think really helped the build to this match. Like saying, I could be the ref, I could be the host of WrestleMania, but I'm just going to be on commentary. Why would he say all that stuff if it was just um, maybe possibly not going to happen, or for the most part not going to happen? And then the the another man's name on the shirt, and then, you know, then he takes off revealing that, you know, he has another shirt. So not only is he putting another man's name on his shirt to sell one shirt, he's selling two shirts. Uh, Then he sits Indian style to mock Punk, and that's when Rollins comes out, says he wants CM Punk on commentary, narrating his finest hour. I thought that was a good line. And says that it's a good idea. Uh, He is going to to do something uh, y'all could never do, and that's make uh, pretty much Drew and Seth interesting. So, you know, he's, you know... All kinds of shit goes down. Punk leaves. Um, Drew gets dropped after cutting some bars. You know, Max Caster doesn't rap on AEW anymore. But here is Drew, uh, you know, doing his best rendition of Eminem's Stan. Kind of changing the lyrics around a little bit. And then Rollins drops him. Uh, You know, interesting segment. Apparently, this segment got a lot of viewers. Um, I thought it was good going back and forth. It didn't have the WWE formula. But, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, Punk was kind of trying to put himself over, which makes sense. He is seeing Punk. He is a pro wrestler. But I, I think that the job was to put the match over, and he was on commentary. I think that could have been something that could have been a surprise um, at WrestleMania. Just have him come out there and be on commentary, have his music hit. I don't know. Uh, It's neither here nor there. We're going to get into that a little later, but we're going to go into Cody Rhodes uh, coming out to address the crowd. Brings up a reference to All In taking place in Chicago because they were in Chicago here. Uh, Of course, All In 2018. Says he is going to be, uh, you know, a fan's best man. He's going to get uh, the wrestling club, you know, that cool, like, uh, after school program that uh, we all know about from Twitter, or X. Uh, he's going to get them into Mania, which I think they are from Philadelphia, so that's kind of cool. And mentions uh, this to say that he acts like uh, the champ because the champ isn't there. thought that was good. And says, sorry, uh, y- you and your cousin can't have a wank fest at WrestleMania like you all wanted. Obviously talking about Reigns versus The Rock. And, and as he points to the sign, The Rock's music hits. The Rock wasn't supposed to be on Raw. He comes out on Raw. This is awesome, Chance, while they're doing a stare down. I think this might be the yeah the first time Rock has kind of been on Raw since this since this big WrestleMania build. Of course, he was on Raw a few months ago prior to the WrestleMania build, and then he whispers in his ear, and he leaves. Um, uh, I think that's pretty pretty interesting that this is awesome, Chant for the Rock. 
because I think that was kind of like an indie chant until like 2015. And, uh, you know, The Rock, of course, spent very little time in the indies uh, or no time at all in the indies, really, only in developmental and then right to WWE. So I think this might be the first ever This Is Awesome chant The Rock has gotten. I don't know. Maybe let me know in the comments below if that's not true. Then they chant CM Punk. Chicago is going to Chicago. The chants died down. He whispers something in his ear. Rock whispers something in his ear and then walks away, leaving the American Nightmare pissed and uh, leaving Chicago booing them. Rocky sucks chants after that. A confused American Nightmare, but he wasn't confused long because he got attacked backstage, which was probably something that he whispered in his ear. And this was an old school uh, Super Bowl halftime show esque brawl from The Rock. Tons of shit talking during this beatdown. And then he, he gets Cody's blood on this belt that says Mama Rhodes as it's raining outside. Beautiful cinematography here for this pro wrestling angle. And he says that what happens, this is what happens when you fuck with the final boss, dropping the F bomb. So Cody has to win here and then take on The Rock. Earlier, I said that The Rock was going to help Cody, but I don't think that's the case anymore. I think they're going to set up a match between The Rock and Cody for maybe Backlash, SummerSlam. You can do it on down the line. I'm not sure when you can do it. Whenever you do it, it's going to be big because it has the fucking Rock in it. This is huge. This is probably the best segment on Raw in years. Years. Uh, we had Jey Uso versus Nakamura. Bloodline show up. Cody and Seth keep them at bay. Drew shows up. Crowd wants Punk. He's not medically cleared. So, you know, what What the hell? Why would they be chanting his name? Uh, then, um, you know, Jay fins them off and gets the one, two, three. We have Ricochet versus uh, JD McDonough. This match was great. JD pulls him up at one point from the ground, pulls him up. Ricochet flies through the air and hits a uh, destroyer. I thought that was kind of cool. A little later, he gets the win, but the destroyer spot was awesome. Uh, that's pretty much the um, the story leaving this match. JD does represent the Judgment Day, the New Day DIY, Ms. Truth going out there. They're going to be the Judgment Day's competitors at Mania in the, ta in the tag team ladder match. Uh, and they were all having a match the competitors and that's why judgment day came out there and attacked them during that match uh, while they were all getting attacked truth was on commentary and they didn't forget about him as they went on to attack the attack our truth i'm waiting for this good comedy spot that's going to happen in this ladder match usually you don't look forward to a comedy spot in a ladder match but that's what our truth has been doing to us lately making us enjoy the little things in wrestling uh, and then we had uh, Becky and Rhea out there. Dominic ends up getting punched like Shibata, stiff, snug, punched. Uh, then they brawl Rhea and Becky. It seems like they didn't know what to do with Dominic. I mean, it, the rumors was it was going to be Dominic versus Brock Lesnar. That fell through. And then they really didn't know what to do with Dominic at WrestleMania. They're tying him into um, Ray and uh, Escobar's feud. So we'll see what happens there. Zayn versus Reed. Gunther looking on. A uh, looming presence uh, is enough to distract Sammy. Uh, Bonsai drop. Reed gets the victory. One, two, three. Usually I wouldn't like Zayn beating, uh, losing before WrestleMania, but I don't think that's that big of a deal because you do want to create that underdog uh, facade to Sammy Zayn here. And of course, Bronson Reed, he's a huge guy, so he can, you know, you can pretty much put him over any guy on the roster and say that he's just a big guy who whoops ass. Candace versus Ivy. Uh, Indy won't cheat for Candace, uh, but Candace wants her to. Maxine on the uh, on the you know apron, upset about this, so she so she jumps on the apron. Candace takes her out. Uh, Candace fakes an injury and then rolls up Ivy to get the one two. Puts her feet on the rope for good measure at three. I mean, I can't say I'm enjoying this uh, heel run, but, you know, it's happening. Andrade versus Vinny, uh, what's his name, Vinny Vinci or something like that. Uh, solid match, Andrade wins, and that was Raw. Going over to SmackDown. I know I'm talking quick, guys, but I got a lot to cover. I'm trying to get these into under 30 minutes, and there's just so much to talk about, so much great shit going on. SmackDown. 
uh, tying up loose ends for Mania. Not really as awesome of a SmackDown as we've become accustomed to during this Mania build, but we did have Jade making her entrance. Her entrance looks sick as fuck. Uh, Wade simping hard during Jade's entrance. Uh, signed the contract, and then she says it's about damn time. And uh, you got that right. It's been months since she's, you know, she came out during Survivor Series. She came out during the Rumble, and now she's officially signed uh, a week out from WrestleMania. You love it. And then we had uh, Bianca versus uh, Co De Dakota Kai, KOD 1 2 3. Bianca gets the victory. Kabuki Warriors attack Bianca. Naomi's music hits. She comes out. But as always, there's a numbers game. But then the game fucking changed. Jade Cargill comes to the ring. She whoops all their asses. And it looks like we got a six women's tag, a trios match, as they say nowadays, uh, at WrestleMania. Like I said, kind of tying up loose ends. Filling in that undercard even more so here with Ray and uh, the LWO out there face to face with Legado del Fantasma issues the challenge for Mania. Dom and Escobar versus Ray and a partner of his choosing. Who's that going to be? Dragon Lee. Uh, so, I mean, Cody, you know, didn't sign, famously re signed with AEW. Jade didn't re-sign with AEW. Here, Dragon Lee, someone who appeared on AEW, never signed because he opted to sign with WWE. And like I think like less than a year later, or maybe exactly a year later, um, around a year, I don't know how long it's been, he's now wrestling, teaming with Rey Mysterio at WrestleMania. So it's not looking good. For people that do sign, people that are lucky enough to sign with the WWE, it, it seems like it works out for them rather than going to AEW where you can get lost in the shuffle. I mean, Swerve's a big star now, don't get me wrong, but it took him a while. It took him about a year to really get going. Uh, it took Edge a few months to get going, I would say. Uh, and then, you know, you got guys like Miro who never really get going. Um, Angel and Alberto from La Gata del Fantasma took on New Catch Republic. Judgment Day looking on New Catch Republic wins and they're headed to wrestlemania pretty deadly versus randy orton and kevin owens logan paul shows up hits kevin owens with a sucker punch pretty deadly steal the victory from a knocked out kevin owens but the viper smelled bullshit he found logan hiding he starts teeing off on uh logan logan uh you know and pretty deadly you know they kind of go at it pretty deadly get hit with a stunner get hit with an rko and then uh, Randy is concerned about uh, Kevin Owens, so he chases Logan Paul. And then Logan Paul retreats to stealing a classic muscle car and peels off. You got to love that shit. That was kind of cool to see. It's like, God damn. I mean, this guy's a lowlife, but he's driving a sick whip. And I thought this was pretty interesting, too. They cut to an EO Sky video package. It looks kind of run-of-the-mill highlights from EO Sky, you know, as she's talking over them. And then all of a sudden... She gets interrupted by Bailey, who's attacking her during the interview. I thought this was kind of cool. I like these WrestleMania builds, these intricate WrestleMania builds. It takes me back to my childhood, you know, attacking people in homes and things like that. And the AJ Styles and LA Knight feud has been full of that. AJ cutting a promo, getting frustrated by the crowd cheering for LA Knight. He gets uh, pairing, uh, or uh, he gets paranoid, sorry. Uh, thinking that LA Knight is there, thinking he's the cameraman, but he was the security guard. Boom, takes off the hat, takes off this ridiculous wig, and then he starts attacking AJ. This, you know, this feud right here could have been, uh, like, skippable. But I do think AJ is a professional. You know he's going to probably steal the show having one of the best matches at Mania. You know that LA Knight is going to have that crowd reaction. And then they've done all these interesting things for this build for WrestleMania. You got to love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this match at Mania. Waller and Theory versus the Street Profits. The screen shows that uh, Karrion Cross uh, attacked B-Fab and uh, Lashley. Dawkins was ready to just leave the match behind. He goes and, like, goes to see what's up, leaving his partner out there to dry. Ford still wanted the win, but Theory puts his knees up during a frog splash, gets the victory, one, two, three, and Theory yells, we're going to WrestleMania. Um, 
there we have it. That was SmackDown, NXT. Uh, of course, they have Stand and Deliver, Trick and Mello, Prime Target, Making Me Cry, Trick Williams from Philadelphia, hometown boy, getting uh, stabbed in the back here uh, by his best friend. This was great. Incredibly well done. I'm looking forward to this match most of all for this show. It's going to be a long Saturday for me. I'm waking up. I'm going to watch the Ring of Honor show. I'm going to put up a podcast. I'm going to watch Stand of the Liver. I'm going to put up a podcast. And then I'm going to watch WrestleMania. And you bet your ass I'm putting up a podcast. Uh, Dragonoff versus Stax. The Don's right-hand man. Champ stands tall. Uh, but his hand is fucked up. It's looking like it's AI generated. The fingers are all bending all over the place. We don't know what's going on with him. So we have the champ with a fucked up hand going into WrestleMania. We also are going into Stand and Deliver, rather. Sean Spears and Dijak, uh, two journeymen, never cross paths until right now. Uh, these are two guys who have been at it at, on you know on the main roster, finding themselves in NXT. Clever camera shot here. Joe Gacy looming under the ring and sneaking away with a chair. Uh, feast your eyes. Dijak beats Spears. Spears losing already. Not looking good for his run in NXT. Speaking of guys that have been on the main roster before, Alpha Academy show up to wrestle Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. Hot tag to Otis. Hitting the worm and then hitting the elbow. One, two. Corbin kicks out. Slams breaker. One, two. Corbin breaks it up. But they do hit a doomsday device where breaker catches Tazawa and turns it into a uh, like a, a like a, a press slam. I thought this was pretty cool. And then people showed that this is something that his his uh, his his father and uncle used to do so that's kind of cool the champs win one two three and the good brothers come out followed by axiom and frazier followed by the lwo we got a brawl and we'll see what happens with that on tuesday rich holland out there looking like he lost his smile seemingly steps aside from nxt i don't know if this is a work uh but i think it is i mean it has that wwe promo cadence to it uh, so we'll see what happens with it. We'll see where it goes. Um, and, uh, I mean, I'm sorry if it is. I mean, I don't know. I guess he's doing a good job because I don't really know. But I do think that it's just a part of the storyline here. Uh, Thea Hale snaps and starts uh, fighting off uh, or starts fighting um, the the other ladies in Chase U, the leader of Chase U, uh in this women's division and the other ladies keep keep them both at bay but then more ladies come out i'm really uh showcasing my lack of knowledge of the nxt women's undercard here um but you know there was a big brawl between ladies i ain't changing the channel if i'm flipping through the channel but who the fuck flips through channels anymore one woman i know well other than the, that's not on the NXT undercard is Natty Nightheart. She is a, a one woman making history herself uh, because she takes on Lola Vice and every match she has is history because she's had the most matches out of any woman ever in the WWE. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, they go at it. Uh, the future Hall of Famer gets the better of the young upstart. One, two, three. Josh Briggs versus Duke Hudson. Dijak on commentary. Distraction. Uh, distracts Briggs, uh, Chase U Staple gets the advantage, but then Briggs proves that he is tough enough, hits the Lariat, one, two, three, and Obafemi appears, and I think we're having like a four-way dance. Uh, Josh Briggs, Duke Hudson, Dijak, I don't know what's going on here, but it's going to be a stand and deliver, and I'm fucking excited. And now I'm going to go into my AEW review. I'm going to give you my overall thoughts about what I think with the promos and everything. And then I'm going to rank every single match from Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision from worst to first. Uh, AEW Dynamite, I think there was a new theme song. Uh, the song kind of sucks, but it's good for a wrestling show, if you know what I mean. Sick Danielson vignette. Bucks interview. Uh, looking like Dumb and Dumber, but I'm I'm all here for it. Okada pulling up in the Ferrari. Mercedes Mernay getting out of some nice car as well. You gotta show the wrestlers getting out of expensive cars. It just helps. I don't know I don't know why I don't know how, but it does. It works. 
Darby with Tony Hawk. That's cool. Jericho and Hook. Uh, talking. Uh, take, you know, okay, so I guess Jericho wanted to face Hook, so he teamed with him, and then he fought him, and then Hook ended up beating Jericho, and now they're pissed at one another, more or less. Uh, Tony uh, Storm on Turner Classic Movies. I thought this was cool. My mom would probably like this. My mom would rarely like something on a wrestling show, but I think this was funny. Kyle O'Reilly cutting a promo. It was okay, but uh, the Edge video package here, Adam Copeland uh, talking over top. This is great. Um, going over to Rampage, of course, a very skippable show, but Bullet Club Gold uh, at the Daddy Ass House. Uh, they destroy some stuff, but then ultimately Billy Gunn comes home and they hightail it. They didn't even really break anything. They were just at the house. Uh, collision, FTR promo, always solid, the acclaim, and Daddy Ass confront this home invasion. Daddy Ass wants to wrestle Switchblade Jay White, and it's going to happen, I think, on Dynamite. Christopher Daniels challenges Malachi Black for Rampage for some reason, and then we're going to go into the matches. Before I, you know, get into the matches, Collision is going to be going up against WrestleMania. Uh, so that's ridiculous. I mean, of, and also going up against the Final Four. So you literally have like two of the biggest sports entertainment events all year going up against your weekly show that's struggling already. But let's rank every single match from worst to first. We have Ricky Starks and Big Bill versus Top Flight. Uh, first time seeing Ricky Starks and uh, Big Bill since losing to Sting and Darby, which feels like forever ago. Then uh, the story of the match here has to be Ricky Starks getting kicked in the back of the head. And then all of a sudden he's acting slow. His... his uh, History of a neck injury, uh, getting rolled up, one, two, uh, ref stops counting, and uh, he's not moving though, so people are booing, no one knows what's going on, I guess he wasn't supposed to kick out, but I think uh, even uh, Darius even did a handstand to not put pressure on his neck at that point, I think he knew something was wrong, and then a random pin took place, one, two, three, top flight advance. Uh, Starks is hurt. People are checking on him. Uh, this looked rough, and uh, I am going to, uh, you know, put this match just as the worst, just by principle. Roderick Strong and Daddy Magic they wrestled on Rampage at number fifteen, number fourteen. Diana Perazzo versus um, Rose. I've uh, been wrestling only for three years, but she has popped up on ROH and now popped up in AEW. But Diana Perazzo. Uh, made you know made her tap quickly number 13 dustin rhodes versus the butcher butcher tries to control the pace and he gets hit with a final reckoning one two three butch uh rhodes gets the victory uh, mariah may versus nikita timeless out there uh, beforehand she is supposed to wrestle but she can't compete nikita a 14 year veteran wrestling mariah may at this point and may is uh you know this you know it's a 14-year veteran, and this might be her biggest match of her career. Uh, takes it to Mariah May at first. Mariah connecting with Tony's hip attack. Mayday, one, two, three. Number 11, Kyle O'Reilly versus J.D. Drake. J.D. misses a Vader bomb, and then uh, uh, O'Reilly starts uh, chopping the tree down, with connecting with kicks with the lower legs, and then all of a sudden landing an elbow and then tapping him out. Undisputed Kingdom out there celebrating. Uh, and Kyle really doesn't seem like he likes it. But going into the top 10 of matches for AEW this week. Lady Frost versus Thunder Rosa. Crowd really quiet here. Seem seemingly worried about Starks getting injured. Um, and, uh, you know, but the it was kind of cool to see the women kind of get that crowd back on their side here these are two of my favorite women on the roster here two very underrated women in AEW uh, even getting a Lady Frost chant against the former women's champion but then Thunder Rosa gets the victory with a tequila bomb or a Tijuana bomb excuse me one two three and she will be facing Mariah May on Dynamite um, number nine, Undisputed Kingdom versus Cassidy and Trent. Tag tournament matchup here. Trent in trouble, cutting the ring in half. Hot tag to freshly squeeze. One, two, Bennett kicks out. Strong, uh, just 
hauls off and punches Chuck Taylor for no fucking reason in the mouth outside the ring. Cassidy dives on him to take him out. Um, ends up taking out uh, Taven as well. Trent rolls up Bennett one two three, and you have Trent and Cassidy representing best friends going on to face the Young Bucks in the next round. I think I just spoiled who was going to win in a match later on, but who cares? Let's keep going here. Willow Nightingale versus Sky Blue versus Statlander versus Anna J at number eight. Mercedes at ringside. Willow cleaning house and making note of the CEO at ringside. Lots of near falls. No woman can put the other woman away. Blue connects with a uh, uh, counter to Dr. Bomb. Goes for a code blue. Nails it. One, two. It gets broken up. Big power bomb to Anna J. One, two, three. Willow gets the victory, but then gets attacked by Julia Hart. No one likes Willow. Mercedes, Julia. She's so likable, but in this women's division, no one likes her. Moving on to number seven, FTR versus the Infiltry Tag Tournament. Uh, Infiltry's biggest match of their career following the biggest match of their career last week. Charlie Bravo's faces are really great here. You can really tell he's in pain. They fuck up a little bit here, breaking up a pin, but the match continues. Crowd wants an upset. Big rig, as they used to call it. One, two, three. FDR wins with the Shatter Machine. Number six, Osprey versus Shibata. Osprey in control. He dives. Shibata decides uh, he ain't going to take it no more. He hits a suplex on the outside and hits a snug ass kick. Uh, stays in control in the ring. So Osprey takes it to the outside again, only for him to eat a boot. Back in the ring, Shibata. T uh, timing, uh, teeing him up, tying him in knots, strike battle, hidden blade, one, two, three, Osprey gets the victory, they both bow to each other, they both hug it out, you love the show of respect, um, and Shibata will be featured later on here, number five, the curtain jerker for collision, Adam Copeland with the Cope Open, taking on Matt Cardona, Matt Cardona, current heel in the Indies, best heel in the Indies, I would say, uh, and he got his start as Edge's henchman, uh, as an edge head. Crowd super into this. Cardona controlling the pace here and even hitting an executioner. Goes, you know, for his own shit. Goes for the uh, the woo kick. Gets countered into a sit down power bomb. One, two, no. Spear countered by a rough rider. Cardona goes for a spear, can't hit it. Adam hits the spear. One, two, three. Lights go out. Malachi Black appears in the ring. Murphy attacks Edge from behind. Briscoe tries to help. Eddie, uh, Eddie, uh, not Eddie Guerrero, but Eddie Kingston comes out, evens the odds. Long story short, we're getting a six-man tag. I thought it was going to be next week, and we were going to get Malachi Black and Edge at Dynasty, but no, we're getting a six-man tag at Dynasty April 21st. Um, Danielson, uh, Claudio, and Shibata versus Lange Archer and The Righteous. Claudio slams Dutch. Love to see that shit. They, uh, they cut the ring in half. Danielson in trouble. He, he tries fighting them off, but they're just staying on him. Uh, boss man slam 1-2. Danielson ki kicks out. He won't quit. Hot tag Claudio in the ring. Hits the big swing and locks in the sharpshooter to Archer. Dutch stops that submission. Shibata lights up Vincent. Archer drops him. Sinton from Vincent. One, two, no. Shibata and Vincent going at it. Basaiko need a Dutch. Shibata dumping Archer to the outside. Shibata and, and uh, Vincent go at it again. Sleeper. PK. One, two, three. Shibata wins for his team. Great main event here, but it doesn't crack the top three. Number three. Or number two. I don't know what's going on. I guess it is in the top three. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Um... My whole system here is kaput, but number th number two, best matches on Dynamite. Young Bucks are on AW. Young Bucks versus Private Party. Silly string over the guardrail. Never seen that. Nicholas and Quinn balancing on the rail here. You gotta love that. Nick hits a Falcon Arrow. That was so cool. Slice bread power bomb double team from the Bucks. Gin and juice from Private Party. Private Party hits the 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 more bang for your buck, so they're doing each other's moves. It is a glorious spot fest going on. Nicholas gets the ring bell, ref stops him, turns around, Matt with a low blow to Quinn, uh, Matt with the low blow, Quinn with the lariat, one, two, Nick puts, uh, you know, puts Matt's foot on the rope, 
to break up the pin. EVP trigger one, two, three. And the Bucks advance in the tournament, taking on, as we've already mentioned, best friends. So it's FTR and Top Flight on one end of the bracket, Final Four. And the Bucks versus best friends on the other end of the bracket. I mean, I can't be the only one wanting the Bucks versus FTR. But that was not the best match on AW this week. The best match, Swerve versus the catcher. The main event of Dynamite, Callis at ringside, Joe watching from the back, Nana hyping up the crowd. There is a big fight feeling the air. Swerve feeling himself until he got caught with a brain buster and hits a running senton over the top rope. Swerve gets momentum, double stomp on the apron in, in the middle of the ring, goes for another stomp. Takeshita turns it around in midair, goes for a power bomb. Uh, then hits an inverted wheelbarrow thing that he does, throw in Swerve back, big knee, one, two, no. Swerve able to go back, hits the Swerve stomp, one, two, Takeshita kicks out. Then he hits the big pressure, one, two, three. Swerve cashes in his ticket for the number one contender shot at um, whatever this thing is called on April 21st. It's a new pay-per-view from AEW, Joe and Swerve. Danielson Osprey, the six man tag match with Edge going up against the House of Black. I mean, it's shaping up to be a great fight, great match, but I just can't get over how dumb it is to go up against WrestleMania and the Final Four. That's ridiculous. I'm losing my voice because I love wrestling so much. Uh, look for a lot of podcasts. I'm going to throw up a lot of podcasts this week, and I hope you guys are all into listening to it. As always, fly high. I'm out.